Years ago, my grandfather showed me a method for rolling a bill. Uh, see if I can remember exactly how it goes. You roll the bill, oh, I remember now. Like this, you make a little tube. And you get silver. Silver from a silver certificate. That's 50 cents. Let's try for some more. Let's make a little tube like this. Ah, and the other 50 cents. That's how I make my money. Now, at any point in time, when I have a pair of cards in my left hand, I want you to call stop. Stop. At this point. Yeah. In other words, you could have stopped here, but you elected to stop here. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now, we'll lay those two cards aside, and uh, I'll give you a second choice. In other words, I'll remove the cards again in pairs. At some point in time, you call stop. Stop. This pair. Yes. You're happy with this pair and not the one on the table. Is that correct? All right. You've chosen, uh, at random, four cards. Let's check your luck today. There's the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Hearts, the Ace of Spades, ah, and the Ace of Diamonds. This mystic feat I now perform with solid steel in rounded form, a quaint and curious mystery from an oriental shore. Both rings solid, disconnected, doing things so unexpected, suddenly intersected, different from before, these two rings and nothing more. And when it comes that I perchance to look upon this happenstance, how rings can link in just a wink when separate before, I wonder then in my confusion if perhaps it was an illusion. Could it be then my delusion? I admit I'm never sure. Perhaps imagination, nothing more. And now I hear a gentle tapping, or perhaps an eerie rapping, or even maybe a steely snapping, a sound we've heard before. Again the rings are intertwined, a deep dark mystery for the mind. But just as easily we find they separate once more like rings of smoke. They melt apart. How strange these rings of yore. And now we take a ring so plain. We add to it one again. Two rings so simple, so elegant and more. And now without another word they take flight much like a bird emitting sounds we've never heard as they link midair once more. And for those of you with dispositions that lend themselves to great suspicions, these rings too assemble in the same way as before, but just as quickly they reverse as if under ancient curse the rings themselves start to disperse until all is as it was before except for this chain of four. A chain so lovely to behold, and yet another mystery to unfold. For as the rings they disconnect, to challenge again my intellect for three on one, that's not the same as we have had before, which brings me to this new decision that there must be some small incision perhaps unseen through human vision, or maybe larger than a door for this steely mass to penetrate. Three rings, no less, no more. Ah, but just as I've been proven wrong with every thought I've had this long, this ring is pristine, solid, connected as before. So it seems that I've been caught napping for with just a gentle tapping, the ring is back again in trapping the others as before. These three rings and nothing more. And now before I take my leave, I have one task. That is to cleave these rings from one another. Number one begins the score. 
we follow through with number two. We're halfway there, just these to do. Next, next is numbers three and four. A mystery throughout the ages to challenge scientists and sages. For as the last ring disengages, disconnected as before, so ends our tale of silver rings, enchanting rings from an oriental shore.